The screencast is going to look at the demand curve for a monopoly. Um, when we're talking about a monopoly, we're talking about one producer in an industry. It doesn't matter if they have um, similar or identical types of products because they're the only producer. They are termed a price maker because they help determine the price um, of the product as opposed to the perfectly competitive firm that is the price taker. As for ease of entry um, and exit, it is extremely difficult to get into this market or to get out of this product, which means that um, you, we should remember that for about break even, that a perfectly competitive firm um, can't break even. So when we look here at the uh, diamond um, picture here, that's an example because monopolies are illegal in the United States. And so De Beers is a good example of an industry that has not 100% control of the diamonds, but they have over 85% of control of the diamonds. And so one of the things that the government has stated is that if De Beers ever holds a meeting here in the United States, they will break them up because of their monopoly status. But since they don't do that, they've been able to exist for so long. So when we're looking here at the monopoly graph, the first thing that we should recognize is that the demand curve is more inelastic than the perfectly elastic that you are used to with a perfectly competitive firm. There aren't a lot of substitutes, and that's why it becomes more and more inelastic than any other type of demand curves that we'll see. We've lost our friend, Mr. Darp. Um, because the marginal revenue curve is no longer equal to the demand curve. So we have DARP over here, demand equals average, revenue equals price, but we have our marginal revenue curve that is below the demand curve. And that is because as quantity increases, the price decreases, which is the law of demand, for each good. And so you can sell one unit at maybe $10 here, but in order to sell two units, you have to sell both at a new and lower price. And so that's why the additional revenue is not just about that new price, but about both of them now converting to this new price. And that's where you look at the additional revenue. And so that is below what the demand curve is. When we're looking here at things, we want to look at the efficiencies that go along with um, the monopoly. So first off, the formulas. The good news is the formulas are all the same. So you have here your profit maximizing output, which is MR equals MC. And for this one here, you can locate it right on the graph where the marginal revenue cur curve and the marginal cost curve both intersect. One of the tricks here is to recognize price. In order to figure out the price, again, it's not perfectly elastic where you're just going to draw a line over here to the dollars per unit axis, but rather you have to go where MR equals MC, take it up to the demand curve, and that gives you the price for the monopoly. Um, allocative efficiency, remember, is producing that right mix of goods. The formula for that one is price equals marginal cost. And as you can see here on the graph, allocative efficiency is over here. That's very sad because what that means is that a monopoly is never allocatively efficient. They're always producing at a, a price or an output over here where price is always above marginal cost. Productive efficiency is producing goods as cheaply as possible. For that one, we're looking where MC equals ATC. Um, a monopoly is never um, productively efficient. And lastly, you have the break-even point, which is price equals ATC. And again, a monopoly will never break even. And because, that's because, again, you don't have that ease of entry and exit into the firm. And so with this, you can see here that with regard to these different efficiencies and the break-even, a monopoly will never achieve that.